So art is one of those things that you just can't ignore when it comes to trying to create a commercially successful product. You need something that you can use for marketing material. You need a visual that uh, the audience can latch onto. You need to represent the, the game or the, the book or whatever you're trying to make. And unfortunately, art takes a lot of time and can be prohibitively expensive. And it's also really easy to waste money if you go about it the wrong way. Let's look at the concept art for Distal in particular, and I'll share the, the level of detail that I'm trying to achieve. So first I'd like to introduce you to Nesha. The contract went to uh, Gray Herb, who is an awesome artist and has done a lot of things for Pathfinder in the past. But this is ultimately what I got back. One of the first things that I was super excited for was just to see what my Atlian race would look like. So species, race, lineage is what we call them in, in Distal. And I had some very specific uh, features that I wanted to make sure they had. For example, the, the wings that you see, uh, that the manta ray wings draping down here was a big important part. Their hair is more like frills that are intentionally styled like hair of other uh, species throughout the distal. And they, uh, they're amphibious. They're not specifically bound to the water, though that's where they originated from. And then there was a bunch of uh, kind of general concepts for the types of clothing and equipment that they wear. And all of that, the, the most important parts of that were put into an email and then sent over to the artist. And then, and then, I, and then I also sent him a bunch of lore. You don't need to do that. He was excited. Uh, for to, to get that much information because usually it's just like a, a paragraph that they have to work off of. One thing that you want to fall or make sure not to fall into is that you need to give the artist enough room to be creative. Anytime that I've worked with an artist, I put together a reference board. For the Atlian race in particular, I had a very specific idea of what I wanted it to look like. And the, the closest representation of that was, was this. This is from a game called uh, Crucible. It was very, very, very short lived, very unfortunate. But one character that I fell in love with was a Jonah. And uh, a Jonah is actually, I'm not sure what they call her uh, particular race, but it has a lot of the features that I was super um, excited to have with my uh, particular lineage. And I make sure that in this ref board to do a number of things, I don't want to just send pictures over to an artist and say, hey, do this. I want to specifically point to the features that I like uh, about the images that I'm linking. So for example, we have you here uh, at the top, I say that this is the body ref. Um, you know, Joan in the first few pictures, is the, this is the closest vision to the species as a whole. So the artist can say like, okay, I get where you're going for. And then uh, one thing that I wanted to outline in particular is just how the color shifts from uh, different skin tones. So you have this like marine blue here to this more lavender purple over here. And, uh, and that is something that, um, that I wanted to be a, a part of this particular lineage. And then if we move down a little bit more, there's a little bit more um, for, of, a, of a Jonah. And then you have uh, Jarl, Jarl from uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. And then this particular art, I've seen it in a number of places. I can't remember who the artist is off the top of my head, but all of these images, you can do a reverse Google search on and then find the artist. It, I think it's just good form that an artist is able to figure out who has done the, the original work, and then they can uh, kind of hone in on it if they want to. But I don't think that that's super necessary when it comes to conveying the idea. Uh, head and frills are integrated, nose doesn't push outward as much. So if you look at uh, Jarl, the, the nose comes in, nose comes in, uh, and even on a Jonah, the, the nose is, is kind, of, uh, kind of comes in. And then the, the head and frills being integrated, so everything kind of being this one uh, piece is something that I was uh, was pointing to as well. So then we go down to an equipment ref. So this is the the general feel of uh, the equipment, though this is a little bit tricky because the equipment that you see on screen is diverse. There's a lot that an artist could key in on, which is why um, I've kind of outlined very specific aspects of it. So like angular cuts, lightweight. So this sort of situation, um, some of this translucent material I was pointing out as well. And then and dig the netting and the bobbles. So you see like the uh, the netting on this particular character and then the netting over here. 
um, the baubles I was referring to to this footwear should be open toe, something that I cared about. And uh, if we go down to the pose reference, again, this is all backed up by an email as well, so that it isn't just the reference board. Uh, the pose ref, this is my initial thought, uh, is it something like this, but more relaxed. So if we go back to uh, a Joan or a Jonah, if we go back to uh, to Nesha, so relaxed. This was the concept. She is just getting home from like a fishing trip. That's the feeling. Go back to the pose ref. Uh, if that doesn't work, we can fall to something below. So I really liked this, except this is very like uh, intentional, heroic. It's a pose. Um, it could be martial arts in that, um, I mean, you can even do stretching exercises with quarter staffs, but it feels like very monk. But one thing that I wanted to try to represent is like, okay, well, if your arms are outspread and you have a uh, this particular type of weapon, which was outlined in the brief as well, how are you going to have the the frills or the uh, the manta ray like wings drape off uh, in a way that makes sense? So I wanted to to try to figure out how you could do that. And then um, I said, if it doesn't work, we just fall back to, to what's below. So one of the arms is is up deliberately so that you can show the manta ray wings. That's a big feature uh, of this particular uh, lineage. And uh, ultimately, what we ended up with was uh, was was way better. And this is something that um, you know Gray thought worked really well in, in what he was working on. So, so after you've sent a design brief, you've sent a ref board. What you're looking to get back at that point are sketches that you can uh, then approve or uh, iterate on and uh, make sure that you're both on the same page. So if we look at the uh, the first initial sketches, the, this one on the on the left, it basically uh, Gray put two versions together uh, just in different poses to give me options. It gave a really good idea of where his head was at. It represents a couple of different directions that you can go. So at this point, you need to make a choice. And it can be, okay, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. What do we end up with? And in order to do that, you uh, need to then get some some revision. So you provide feedback, and then we end up with uh, with what we have next. So here's the feedback that I sent over to to Gray in particular. And I, um, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I make it a, a point to just like clip something using the Microsoft clipping tool. And then I will uh, write what I want and uh, what I like more. And this is also backed up with an email, just short, descriptive, don't waste anybody's time. And you want to kind of outline what should try to change. I, uh, you know, I dig the pant folds and the exposed knees. So maybe we could try it over here. Uh, the try to get the ears more integrated. And one of the things that I mentioned in the email is that I uh, when people think of mermaid, when they think of Triton in Dungeons and Dragons, there's always this like fins for ears concept. I didn't want to do that. That is, uh, I wanted something that felt uh, integrated and I don't know, just the fins for ears thing never really didn't really gel uh, with me. So you can see that up at the top. It says uh, try ears more integrated. So at this point, the artist is going to uh, take your direction and make an iteration or a revision rather to the the art and then somewhere in between that or maybe after uh, I think artists are probably like going to work a little bit different some of them just like they need you to lock something down and say like okay can I go with this some people will be a little bit more fluid and they're willing to uh, to adjust but at that point what you're looking to get back is a color draft no that's not what you call it I don't know what you call it so this was the first color of uh, of Nesha, uh, it's just to to get across the the general idea of how things could be uh, colored for this particular uh, art. My feedback was that the interior of the the wings were kind of it was it was the opposite um, of what we wanted to to do. We wanted it to be kind of like darker on the outside because ultimately that's how uh, the the skin would work for like manta ray wings and that sort of thing. So. Uh, was able to change that no problem. I uh, incorporated the knees from the, the last feedback, and uh, and I gave some additional feedback here. It felt like um, you know some things were maybe needed a little bit of work or were out of position and and that sort of thing. But it was very very minimal. Uh, one because the artist is good. Two because we already have an understanding 
of what we're trying to achieve. So now we're both just kind of working to get it to uh, the next phase, which is a render. So to render an object, we want to bring it to a, a 3D form. So that is uh, basically where things start to look real good. This is uh, a different version just without a background. And, uh, and I think it turned out uh, amazing. I'm really using this concept art for a lot of uh, what Distal's current marketing is because I, I'm on a shoestring, uh, less than shoestring budget. I am broke. There was one more uh, revision between uh, before we we got to the, the final stage, though. I want to. So when I uh, asked about the the ears, you know, I made that um, a note. There were a few different versions uh, that he sent me just quickly, like, OK, here's a, a few different head types uh, that we could potentially use. I liked them all. They're all good. And what I ultimately ended up going with was this one right here, uh, just the alt head one. But I could totally see alt head two, alt head three. This, I really liked this one. I was kind of integrated. Uh, I could totally see that working for just like other Atlians might just have, you know, their uh, lobes shaped differently. And that's pretty much it. You'll get your art back. Uh, a lot of artists do 50% up front and 50% on the back end as far as uh, pay is concerned. And you just need to make sure that if you're creating a commercial product, you have to have a commercial license. I would say send emails. Don't even worry about having a, a verbal conversation with people because a lot of that information needs to be documented or at the very least, it needs to be reiterated after you have a conversation with somebody, because if there's any sort of discrepancy, you need to be able to go back to the emails and say, this is what we agreed on. So uh, fortunately, I've never had to to do that, both on, uh, you know, within the games industry or with these uh, couple of projects that I've done here. But the last thing that I kind of want to to touch on, and I don't want to throw shade, but when you look for cheap work, you can find it on Fiverr. There are two main hurdles when it comes to getting artwork from Fiverr. The first of which is that AI artwork is absolutely running amok on that website. Also have to watch out for the quality of work. A lot of these artists have very low cost work fairly quickly and don't listen to instruction. So, or we'll have like a limited number of revisions, won't really listen to enough instruction. At least that was my experience. So the art that you see for in Distal's uh, background, there is a whole bunch of uh, direction, very easy to follow. Uh, I gave a whole mock-up. I gave uh, a, I, I did more work than probably I should have to get this particular art piece. And a lot of it was just like, wasn't even, I'm asking myself, like, why did you do this? Ultimately, I have what I have. I was able to make some edits to it so that I can actually make it usable. And that's probably something that you need to be aware of too, is that sometimes you're gonna strike out. And a lot of it depends on uh, the artist and the portfolio, their track record of content up to that point. I don't know how many of you will be in this particular position, but another way to get art is to contract an outsourcing house to do it. So an outsourcing house is like they're expensive you uh, are working to get enough work done for uh, multiple projects is what they tend to seem to want so you you line up a number of they're looking for reliable work at the same time you won't necessarily get reliable results this will depend on which outsourcing house that you're working with uh, usually there's a really good artist or number of artists the first time that you contract that I've seen this multiple times where you you'll contract an outsourcing house and then they'll give you like some a artists you know great follow directions a lot of experience and uh, just to hook you and then subsequent business with them they they start like uh, mixing things up with artists who are less experienced don't understand the art style and probably have no business working on the the type of project that you're trying to get art for so that being the case, I'm not even sure where I'm going with that because I don't know how many people are really uh, looking to get this sort of uh, art. But what I will say is that the relationships that you build with artists are going to matter. So once you find a good artist, hire them again if you have if you have the means and you know obviously uh, need the work done. 
people uh, definitely like to be able to have consistent uh, work and then also you want to have a consistent style. So hopefully people have gotten something of, of value from this particular video. I'm going to have to start contracting more art out if Distal, which is currently on Backerkit, you can follow it. Uh, if that project takes off, the uh, the majority of the of the expenditure at this point to get it into book form is the art for it. So if you'd like to support me there, you can do that at uh, playdisrpg.com, which will link right to the backer kit. And uh, if this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.